scene like the driving scene. is within the reach of almost everyone as soon as he's of legal age. There's only the learning to drive. on the road. Make a right over here, and then make another right. Come down to the corner, make a right. Okay, like that. Pass these tests, and you receive your official credentials to enter the driving scene. In fact, in just a very few years, 11,000 kids a day will be getting their licenses to drive. Attention, 11,000 a day. 
about more kids getting wheels. Well, it's not these wheels. It's these wheels. These wheels keep turning out statistics that are extremely damaging to the teenage... Right now, there are about 10 and a half million teen drivers. That's only about 10% of the driving population. Yet, teenage drivers are involved in 17% of all accidents. And in 16 out of 100 fatal accidents, a teen driver was killed. That's over 10,000 teen drivers dead at the wheel. This is an awfully high percentage of trouble for the young driver. What's the reason for it? Frankly, there aren't enough facts to go on. All we have are opinions. I think a child of 14 or, or 15 or even 16 or, or even 17 is, uh, is too young. He lacks judgment, uh, the maturity to handle an automobile in traffic, especially on the highway where they, they go so fast. Girls today at 17 and 18 can't even boil water. How are they going to take the responsibility of a car? Keeping up with the Joneses when people move so fast. I have to do more than so-and-so. I have to be better than someone else. Don't this have is why more. they keep going, keep striving. So hard. That's, that's yours and my generation. But the new generation is, is the uh, fast living. They don't know what they're going to do. They yeah, but like, I have to have a faster car than Tommy down the street. And the yellow Mustang was, uh, was tempting me. He was uh, pulling gears with me, you know, pacing my car. So the roadway was clear and the temptation was there. So I... Uh, they have better cars, they have more horsepower, they have better roads. Uh, naturally, they're going to drive faster. And uh, in driving faster, they involve a greater risk. I don't know whether it's the kids today or whether they've always been this way, but they don't seem to realize that anything can happen to them. It's ridiculous to talk to them about the consequences of their act. Uh, they think they're immortal. If uh, you ask them why they did what they did, what they did, what reason they did this, they say, fate. That's all, just plain fate. Just fate, that's all. I think lots of youngsters don't have the emotional stability necessary to drive properly most of the time. Okay, John, let me check. Mom, can I go to a party Friday night? Going to one Saturday night. All right, well, listen, I'll, I'll go out this weekend and I won't go out next weekend at all. Absolutely not. Yeah, Johnny. A lot of kids let their emotions do the driving. Look at that maniac. He almost ran you off the road. Yeah, that's everyday occurrence. I'll tell you, boy, these young kids, they ought to do something. Pass some car law. Keep them off the highway at night. I tell you, it's just, people got too much money, too much time. Look at that maniac back there. There's 90% of your accidents right back there. Tailgating? Come on, clown. There he goes, another one. Had to burn early grave. When you come right down to it, does a kid have to have a car? Is it really necessary? A teenager doesn't really have to have a car. It's, it's like you said, it's like television. It's um, just nice to have, but we don't need it. You live in the city, cars, maybe not a necessity. But out here in the middle of nowhere, you've just got to have one. If you don't have a car out here, you're stuck out here. And this is a middle of nowhere, man. To me, a necessity is my telephone or my car, I guess, my surfboard. 
My parents think the only thing I need is a clothes and put a roof over my head. I don't have to live like that, and I'm not going to. He doesn't have, a, have to have a car for me to go out with him, but it helps. <laughs> They have a job to do in school. They've got four years of, of uh, high school or four years of college. This is, this is what they're going there for. They're not going there to socialize. They're going there to study. And I guarantee you, with yeah, my son, you have have he will not have a car. You've got to have a happy medium besides. He will not have a car. On the other hand, a lot of parents don't think that's a relevant question. I've been reading the editorials on the problem of teenage driving. We seem to be unable as parents to distinguish between permissiveness and discipline. The kids come in, they tell us what they're going to do and when they want to do it, and we love them so much. We're trying to be so affectionate and good to our children that we don't understand our role as the disciplinarian and tell them what we think they should do. Then what happens? We get the call from the hospital, we hear from the police department, the kids are hurt, and we wonder what went wrong. Was it our fault? Did we do something wrong? Should I blame my wife? Should we pass it off as something the school did or did not do? Is society at fault? There's nobody to blame. The fact is, there are more teenagers on the road nowadays. That's why there are more teenage accidents. Courts are apt to disagree. Many are getting tougher on the teen driver. A lot of parents seem to think I'm too tough on minor offenses. But if we let kids get away with this, running stop signs, going through yellow lights, backing up at 20 miles an hour, next thing you know, we'll be here with something really serious, manslaughter. Or maybe they won't be here at all. Call the next case, please. In 50% of all fatal accidents, alcohol has been found to be a contributing cause. Well, we found indications that there has been drinking. Uh, I'm pretty sure that the uh, group in this car uh, had just left the drinking party. Uh, this is pretty prevalent in most of the accidents. About 50% of the accidents involving teenagers involve drinking. If we see them, we stop them, try to unload the vehicles, but we can't be every place at once. The public is becoming more and more concerned about the teenage accident rate. In state capitals everywhere, lawmakers are translating that concern into action. In the many years I've served as a legislator, I've noticed the mounting concern about the problem of the teenage driver. This concern is not mine alone, but is shared with me by many of my colleagues, public officials, law enforcement officers, and what is perhaps more important, the public in general. I feel that their immaturity, their attitudes on driving in general, their over-aggressive personality traits, and their willingness to take unnecessary risks certainly contribute to this ever-mounting problem. However, this attitude, like a lot of others, may not be restricted to teenagers. Well, I think that uh, the driving problem of today isn't just the teenager's problem, it's, it's everybody's problem. The teenager regards the responsibility of driving very highly, and uh, every time there's any kind of carelessness, the teenager's right away blamed for it. As it says in the article here, quote, teenagers are a low-status minority group, unquote. I mean, what's the use of fighting back when you regard it like this? Uh, since we group, we're blamed for most everything. You'll always meet a, a, a police officer who's had a bad day, or he's just uh, doesn't feel right, or he sees the car, he sees the Corvette, he sees the wheels, and he assumes right away uh, you're out for a, a race or a drag, and they will give you a hard time. Well, their attitude is that uh, you're stopping them not for what they did, but because they're a teenager. Uh, this isn't the case. And on the other hand, the uh, older person, their uh, rebuttal is, well, why aren't you out catching the hot rod kids? And why are you picking on us? We call them as we see them. And when it comes to teenagers, what they see the most of is speed. The younger the driver, the more inclined he is to speed. One out of every four drivers pick. On the other hand, just as a matter of interest, 
The older you get, the less inclined you are to yield the right of way. Almost 50% of drivers over 75 won't move over. One buck's worth the gas. It's not the kids so much as it is the car. Look at those tires. Flat balls. Kid driving like this, tires like these. I bet he hasn't even got a spare in the truck. Let's take a look at the wheel. Six inches of play, both ways. What this car needs is a front end job, maybe a new set of threads. What the kid wants is a new speedometer cable. If I want to risk my life in my car, it's my business. What he should get is a tow truck to the dump. I don't think uh, driving is a teenage problem at all. I think it's uh, just a problem, period. And perhaps someday that the uh, adults will realize that teenagers are probably some of the best drivers in the world, and maybe someday they could be. They should be. Teenagers do have better vision, quicker reflexes, and steadier nerves. Ironically, these undeniable physical advantages often lead to overconfidence and trouble. And driving is basically what we call a psychomotor skill. The term psychomotor means any experience which begins in the brain and ends in muscular action. Everything from combing hair to a play in basketball, in football, or any sport. The more complex the psychomotor activity, the more there is to learn. Experience, calling for active vision, alertness, quick reactions, distance judgments, and so on. Anybody will agree that skiing on professional spurts and most kids would be too scared, and rightly so, to try a slalom the first time on skis. But that same teenager has no hesitation trying a much more dangerous maneuver on the highway. I feel that a good many acts could be avoided if the driver accepts the responsibility that he has a skill to acquire, that it takes time and considerable experience to become a good driver. England, they recognize this. They put a big L on cars driven by people who have just gotten their licenses. This tells other drivers, watch out for them. Learning isn't just a teen problem, but the greater number of new drivers will always be teenagers. And so the problem of inexperience is more directly related to them. Sociologists take a different tack. Many believe that teenagers use the automobile to express rebellion or to satisfy unfulfilled needs. The automobile represents for the teenager a symbol of freedom, a symbol of adulthood, and uh, perhaps also the automobile represents a weapon uh, to be used in the conflict with adult authority figures. Once on the road, the young person becomes his own master. He's free. He can do as he wishes. He can be reckless, offensive, or discourteous. And often get away with it. Unfortunately, this aggression results in violations and accidents. Our culture has always prized and rewarded risk-taking. Today, astronauts are heroes because of the risk involved. We all admire the risk-taker. But when you talk to some teenagers about taking chances, you're liable to get this answer. I want to risk my life in my car. That's my business. Unfortunately, it isn't just his business. Statistically, when a teenager totals his car, he takes others with him. Car crashes are everybody's business, and they're society's business. And society isn't going to put up with the teenage accident rate much longer. While the industry continues its research to make cars safer, 
Many across the country feel that the only answer to the high number of injuries in teenage driving is greater restrictions on the self. Have your attention. I propose that the motion read as follows. There shall be a curfew on all drivers under 21 from the hours of midnight to 6 a.m. The only exception being proof of employment. All in favor? And public opinion is being translated into law. I have introduced a bill which will raise the age of licensed drivers from 16 to 18. And it will be debated on the floor of the House next week. Obviously, the handwriting is on the wall. What will it take to make a teenager realize what's happening to him? Well, as a physical education teacher and basketball coach, I feel the best way to communicate with teenagers in general is to be very direct and punches. Now, if you think this film has been just another adult brainwashing, another hypocritical holier-than-thou sermon, just remember one thing. Who's conning who? Starting to rain. You don't want to be treated like kids. You want more responsibility. You want the world to have some confidence in you. Okay. As far as driving is concerned, nobody is a kid. When you're behind the wheel of a car, you are not a kid anymore. You're a driver. You're there. You've got all the rights and privileges of anybody else. It's stop for you and stop for him. special signs like this. There's one speed for everybody. Signs like these aren't just for adults. No matter who's doing the driving, the signs mean the same. It's obvious that all the reasons we've seen and heard are valid to a degree. Kids are moody. They do let their moods influence their driving. They're inexperienced. They speed. They overload cars. They're reckless and often don't care what happens to them or anybody else. Yet, in spite of the damaging statistics against the teenager, many adults don't agree that more restriction is the answer. Like this high school principal, frankly, adults can't solve this problem. It's up to the kids themselves. They have got to use their own common sense and their own good judgment. I try to get them to ask themselves some questions and to give themselves honest answers. Can a car be a substitute for a personality? A car is powerful, but can it make you powerful? Can it put you ahead of the game in your job? In what you really want to be? Your car can answer the challenge of another car. What's that prove? That one car's got more under the hood than the other? You can't say the same about the drivers. Think real hard. It doesn't know whether you're... And it doesn't care. It doesn't have any opinion at all. It just keeps turning out the numbers that are being used as evidence against you. It's just a machine, like the machine you drive. It doesn't know you. The machine you drive doesn't know you either. It does what you tell it to do. In computerese, they call it input. Whatever you put into the machine, gas or numbers, that's what comes out in power or in statistics. When you get behind the wheel, you're really running two machines. This one and this one. Two machines adding up to what? To trouble? or to the confidence, the responsibility, and the fun of the driving scene. 